With JProfiler, you can easily automate profiling and analyze the results later on. We call this offline profiling, and the key tool to make this work in a most flexible way are triggers. For offline profiling, you will have to start your application with special VM parameters. All the integration wizards in JProfiler offer an offline profiling mode, so let's look at the simple remote integration wizard where you will have to manually insert the VM parameters into your start script. Let's say the profile JVM is on this computer. We select the profile JVM and then the profile offline option and here we have the instructions there is a single JVM parameter the agent path parameter um, this is a short path name to avoid problems with spaces and here embedded after it are several uh, profiling parameters most importantly the offline switch here there is an ID parameter that uh, points to the session that will be used for profiling settings and trigger settings and the config file where the session is saved. When we click on next and then on finish the session is created and added to the list of all sessions. To add triggers we open the session settings, go to the trigger settings section and here we can add one or more triggers. A trigger is a list of actions that is executed when a certain condition becomes true. There are several trigger types in JProfiler. The method invocation trigger is the most flexible trigger. Uh, I'm going to talk about that one in a different screencast, so I'm not going to show it right now. There are threshold triggers for when the heap usage or the CPU load become too big and something should be done. There's a special condition for out-of-memory exceptions. There's a timer trigger, which is very useful if you want to do something at regularly spaced intervals. And then there are the simple JVM lifecycle triggers, JVM startup and JVM exit. If you want to do something right at the beginning or right at the end of the profile process, now let's look at the timer trigger in particular. The um, threshold triggers are very similar, the out-of-memory exception trigger and the JVM lifecycle triggers are even simpler. So let's configure a timer uh, trigger in detail. First we configure the timer itself. We tell it to do something, for example, every 10 minutes, but only after three hours have passed because the problem that we're going to analyze uh, starts uh, to manifest itself only then. Now here comes the really interesting stuff, the list of actions. What can we actually do at this point? If you click on the Add button, you get a list of supported trigger actions. Other trigger types may have different trigger actions. For example, the method trigger has more supported trigger actions. This is what you can do for the timer trigger. There are two really important things here. One is the recording profiling data trigger actions. You have to start recording profiling data at some point because by default nothing is recorded. That's one thing. The other thing is that you have to save a snapshot to disk at some point in your triggers because otherwise you won't have any data to analyze later on. So let's add some example trigger actions. First let's start recording CPU data resetting the previously recorded CPU data. Then let's sleep for one minute, so CPU recording goes on for one minute. Then we stop CPU recording. And finally, after we have recorded this data, we save a snapshot to disk. We call it test will be saved to the working directory and we tell the profiling agent to add a unique number to the snapshot name so we get a series of snapshot files that we can analyze later on in a CPU comparison. If we have many triggers we can give it a manual description. We can also group triggers so that we can enable and disable them together in groups. And finally, after we click finished, the trigger is saved and added to the list of active triggers.